Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurt Kazat's videos, specifically the deadliest being on Earth, the bacteriophage. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. I'm engineering operations to emergency response. I claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get into this. It's been raging for billions of years, killing trillions every single day, while well, we don't even notice. The war is fought Such by the single scale. deadliest entity on our planet, the bacteriophage, or phage for short. A phage is a virus, not quite alive, not quite dead. Also, they look as if someone made them up. Their head is an icosahedron, a sort of dice with 20 faces and 30 edges. Interesting. It contains the genetic material of the virus and often sits on a long tail that has leg-like fibers. There are more phages on Earth than every other organism combined, including bacteria. And they are probably everywhere living things exist. Billions are on your hands, in your intestines and your eyelids right now which might make you nervous since phages are responsible for the majority of deaths on Earth. But you're lucky. While they do commit genocide for breakfast, they only kill bacteria. Up to... It's interesting that's like a own sort of living thing that designed to kill one specific type of object. That's it's fascinating. Also interesting how using the word deadly can actually be considered a good thing just because they keep every something like this on such a massive scale would be needed to keep like populations under control. Just like you would need something to um, stop nuclear reactions from S from exponentially increasing. That's why control rods and built-in temperature feedback mechanisms exist. In order to have a planet with life on it, you need some sort of feedback mechanism to keep everything under control naturally, which is kind of cool. It's just fascinating how the world works. 80% of all bacteria in the oceans are killed by them every single day. But phages also have major flaws. Like any other virus, phages need a host to survive and reproduce. They're not much more than genetic material in a hull, and they specialize. <laughs> Usually, a phage has chosen one specific bacteria and maybe some of its very close relatives. These are its prey. Imagine a phage as like a cruise missile that only hunts and kills members of one very unlucky family. When a phage finds its victim, it connects its tail fibers with receptors and uses a sort of syringe to puncture the surface. Wow. In a weird motion, the phage squeezes its tail and injects its genetic information. Within minutes, the bacteria is taken over. It's now forced to manufacture all the parts of new phages. They only stop when the bacteria is filled up with brand new phages. In the final step, they... I mean, the way I see it, it's very similar to like certain processes, say within a nuclear power plant, like neutrons only fission certain types of targets, such as uranium-235 and plutonium-239, but they'll either get absorbed, but they can also get absorbed by something else in the case of boron-10, or just pass through as if some other element wasn't even there. So this sort of selective, it's interesting to see a crossover between this sort of selective targeting. And a lysine, a powerful enzyme that punches a hole in the bacteria. The pressure is so high that the bacteria sort of vomits out all of its insides and dies. New phages Gruesome, are released and, all and the begin the cycle anew. <laughs> In the last few years, bacteriophages have enjoyed the attention of the second deadliest beings on Earth, humans. Recently, we've started second looking deadliest. into injecting millions of them into our bodies, because we're sort of getting desperate. We screwed up. In the past, a single cut or a sip from the wrong puddle could kill you. Bacteria were our phages, tiny monsters mm. that hunted us mercilessly. But then, about 100 years ago, we found a solution in nature. By accident, we found fungi that produced a compound that killed bacteria, antibiotics. Suddenly, we had a powerful super weapon. Antibiotics were so effective that we stopped thinking of bacteria as monsters. Only the old and weakest among us were killed by them. We <laughs> that was a bit of a mood with Flash, but yeah, it's 
Just like we thought radiation was some monstrous force, now we know how to harness it for good to produce clean, sustainable, safe electricity. But or you could even take this back to fire. It could be scary and burn down entire forests, or you could learn to harness it. That's just the way humans are with everything. It's, it's really cool. Antibiotics more and more for less and less serious causes. We lost respect for the monsters and the weapon. But bacteria are living things that evolve, and one by one, they started to become immune against our weapons. This continued until we had created what are called superbugs. Bacteria immune to almost everything we have. Uh, yeah, this is from antibiotics. It has nothing to do with nuclear mutations. <laughs> oh, that's funny, though. This immunity is spreading across the world as we speak. By 2050, superbugs could kill more humans a year than cancer. The days when a cut or bladder infection... Now, part of that is you know, cancer death rates are going down, too. So just, just keep that in mind when you look at statistics and extrapolations like that can often be way off. I wonder if we'll have commercial nuclear fusion by 2050. It always seems to be 20 years away, and that's more than 20 years, but we'll see. Cough could kill you or your loved ones are coming back. In the US alone, no, more than 23,000 people die from resistant bacteria each year. But it turns out that phages, our tiny killer virus robots, could save us. We could inject them into our bodies to help cure infections. Hold on, how could injecting millions of viruses into an infection be a good idea? I mean, vaccines, you use viruses, so it's the way I see it, we're just using, it's just a different type of technology that could help us out. There are very, very specialized killers of bacteria. So specialized, in fact, that humans are completely immune to them. We are too different. We encounter billions of phages every day, and we just politely yeah, ignore just not each the other. Right one. <laughs> Antibiotics are like carpet bombing, killing everything, even the good bacteria in our intestines that we don't want to harm. Phages are like guided missiles that only attack what they're supposed to. That's an interesting analogy. Well, radiation therapy would be just like irradiating. Not quite like a nuclear bomb, because it could be targeted, but... Using this same little diagram, it would be targeting things on a certain surface or at a certain depth in those little hills or mounds or whatever those are supposed to be, because you would set the energy level accordingly. But it's it's less precise than than a guided missile because you're just it would kill both the uh, good and the good guys and bad guys that happen to be at whatever location there are. It's more location dependent. Wait cool a minute. Analogy. If we use phages to kill bacteria, won't bacteria develop ways of defending themselves? Well, Flails. it's more complex than that. Phages evolve too. There has been an arms race between what? them this and bacteria hilarious. for billions of years, and so far, they're doing great. This makes well, phages spring. smart weapons that are constantly getting better at this killing. This is awesome. But even if bacteria were to become immune against our phage, we still might be able to win. It turns out that in order to become resistant to even just a few species of phages, bacteria have to give up their resistance to antibiotics. They use both. We might be able to trap them <laughs> in a catch-22. This has already been successfully tested with a patient who had no other hope left. The bacteria Pseudomonas aeruginosa, one of the most feared bacteria, infected the man's chest cavity. They are naturally resistant to most antibiotics and can even survive an alcoholic hand gel. After you well, I think we found that 0.1 or 0.01% that you wouldn't that you see on those hand sanitizers that say 99.9 .9, or was it 99.99 percent of suffering a few thousand phages were directly inserted into his chest cavity together with antibiotics the bacteria were immune to after a few weeks the infections had completely disappeared that's awesome when one of those experimental trial things actually works because it really just shows hope of finding something better it's amazing unfortunately this treatment is still experimental and pharma companies are still reluctant to invest the necessary billions in a treatment that has no official approval yet. Mm. But things are finally changing. 
Well, post COVID, in a world of emergency authorizations and fast track approvals, I think that sort of barrier can be removed more quickly without compromising safety, of course, but it's just, it's been greased with the ability to、uh, develop vaccines at, that are presumably developing other technologies. They would at least know, know the process well enough. Not to say that they would you know, shortcut any safety elements, but they would know the process of getting through these things more quickly thanks to experience they have with COVID. I know I've seen that working with regulators at the past, that they just get better at some of their processes if you essentially reach economies of scale, for lack of a better word, in terms of going through approvals. Nuclear industry is one of the most heavily regulated in the world, actually, even more, even more so than healthcare. Arguably. 2016, the largest phage clinical trial today. Then again, some of it, some of healthcare stuff is nuclear, so there's a bit of crossover. Again, and phages are getting more and more attention. And we better get used to it because the era in which antibiotics have been our super weapon is drawing to a close. It might be a weird concept, but injecting the deadliest being on planet Earth directly into our bodies could save millions of lives. The way I see it, it's no different than saying, than people fearing nuclear and how much good it provides for the world now in terms of、uh, safe, reliable, sustainable energy. Also, deadly does not mean deadly to humans necessarily. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.